Hello, welcome to the second part of the author spotlight on Jim Stalin. And for this video, I will focus on just these four books. Uh, for whatever reason, these are not that easy to find in high grades. Um, luckily, I bought many. Uh, well, I bought three of these books before the craze of Warlock happened and I didn't pay much for it. I did pay up for this copy here. But for this book, there's a couple of dings on the spine, you know. Not a biggie, but the rest of the book is very sharp, beautiful covers. Jim Stalin at this stage of his career, I love the way he draw the muscle, okay? I just love the way he delineate everything so tight. Just love it. Very unique. There's no other artist at the time that I think drew like this. I just love the way he draw muscular features. Beautiful covers. And for the for many of these issues, Jim Stalin did everything from penciling to inking to even coloring. Just look at that. That's a beautiful splash page. Gorgeous. And as I have mentioned in other video with Jim Stalin, as a writer, he's very verbose, you know, very wordy. He certainly did not. Uh, like any shortcut on any panels as well as uh, description as I mentioned before you know prior to George Perez coming into his own and become such an incredible artist up until this point I don't think there's any other artist that can cram in so much details in every panel Basically, in this issue, you get the origin of Warlock retold, crammed in in the first few pages. Okay, so now we are into the start of the story. Let's look at that. Incredible. He's one, Jim Stall is one of those artists that I can stare at the page, close up, look at every single line, and then I need to pan out to fully appreciate the beauty of that full page. I love his style of layout. Very, I wouldn't say inventive, but he changed it up. You know, he go from the traditional square to elongated shape like this. Beautiful inking job. Okay, for the most part like some of the greatest artists that we have in this field he is his best anchor when given enough time this book didn't come out monthly so certainly you know Jim Stalin was able to put in a lot of effort because he was able to uh, you know draw ink and color this was uh, coming out on a monthly basis I don't think he can do that very few artists can do all three chores in one month it's 
just beautiful. If you have this book as well as uh, his earlier work, he make a big leap in a very short time. He's one of those artists that didn't do a heck of a lot of work before, but once he's hit his peak form, let's look at this page. Magus. I think if you're a comic book fan, you gotta love Jim Stalin. You know, he's one of those artists like, you know, John Byrne or John Romita or John Basima. It's just, uh, you're not gonna find that many people that dislike his style. Just look at this. So much stuff going on. Beautiful. Beautiful body pose. to go at a pace that is not too slow you know I think with Jim Stalin and this book you really have to just admire every panel every page okay so that's the first one let's move out to the next one 179 another gorgeous cover dark cover dark green beautiful color scheme Look at that gorgeous book. Just look at this. I believe they have reprinted these books in a Baxter format. So if you don't have these books and don't want to spend a lot of money buying them, you can certainly enjoy them and buying the reprint, the Warlock reprint that Marvel put out in the, I think, late 80s. I think. You can check on eBay. I discovered Jim Stalin through Dreadstar. You know, I was not uh, around the hobby when these books came out. And then when Dreadstar uh, came out, I enjoyed that uh, series. And slowly over the years, I went back and looked at his uh, earlier work. And uh, I was very pleased to discover Jim Stalin. Albeit a little bit late. That is some wacky looking creature right there. There's Pipped the Trolls. In these books, Jim Stalin created so many alien creatures, you know, every page almost. They are just chock full of creativity on his part. He introduced Gamora, Pip the Trolls, Magus, and a slew of other supporting characters in this universe. Only from the mind of Jim Stalin. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this video going on at a reasonable pace, otherwise, we'll be here for half an hour looking at four books. Look at that. Great action.
page after page of greatness. I'm telling you, you know, it's it's often you know when you're looking at a book, sometimes you see an artist you know take it easy on a page here and there, but when I flip through these books, you know, seem like Jim Stalin had his foot to the pedal all the way full speed. Issue 180. This is pretty decent copy, but there's a crease and a tear, a small tear in the back, so it's not as high grade. But this book is so crazy expensive that I'm not, I'm not gonna replace this and upgrade it. But here you go again, another gorgeously drawn and ink. Just look at that. That's just beautiful. Gorgeous drawing. I think Jim Stalin work would look absolutely wonderful in black and white because he puts so much um, emphasis on um, inking that I think it would look absolutely gorgeous in black and white. Just the little details that impress me, you know. I mean, he could have just leave it without all the little details on the walls, but the fact that he put in the effort for the most unnecessary area, I would say, says a lot about how much he loves drawing. That is just one crazy looking creature. As I mentioned before, he introduced so many wacky, strange, bizarre looking creatures. This is just beautiful right here. Like I said, there's something about the way he draw the lips and a cheekbone that is very unique that I can take a look at many um, drawing and can tell that it is a Jim Stalin drawing. So it's like this. Regardless of uh, how I feel the story is, as far as complication and hard for me to understand and follow, I have flipped through this book often just to stare at the pictures that admire the beauty. Here we go, that's the first time you see Gamora. Her name was not mentioned. Let's go on to issue 181. Look at the crazy clown. Beautiful drawing. This one is ink by somebody else. Okay, so here you have an issue that is ink by Al Milgram. And then Jim Stalin did the uh, Penciling and coloring. I just love this. Clowns. Once again, on the first few pages, Jim put in a ton of text.
as I mentioned before in the previous vid video, I think Al Milgram is a pretty decent anchor for James Dolan, as you can see. Really nice result. But if if I if I have a choice, I definitely pick Jim Stalin to ink his own work because I think that's where the art looked the best. Okay, so here is where Gamora finally revealed her name. There you go. This one is actually my least favorite of um, the four issues, um, mainly because of uh, what's going on in the story as far as the clowns, but still, I can look at the art for a long, long time, but that is just beautiful right there, gorgeous. The way Jim Stalin draw his beautiful women, it has a little, a little touch of um, remind me a little bit of Barry Windsor Smith. His female character had that regal beauty, as I call it. action scene. Okay, and that's it my friend. Um, hopefully you enjoy the video and we'll fall in love with Jim Stalin as I did if you have never seen his stuff before. If you haven't Hopefully after this video, you will seek out the reprint to enjoy this in person because I will guarantee you, you will spend a lot longer than 10 minutes per book. Got the art, it's just gorgeous. Let's look at that. Great action. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Until the next part where I will feature his run in the Warlock title. Thank you. Bye.